people are joining because it's a class action. It's not about me. It's about everybody. And people are joining left and right. And what it is is they're taking away your freedom of speech. They're taking away your right to speak. They're taking away everything, and they get powers. So there is the former president now slamming big tech censorship, his lawsuit claiming now that Facebook, Google, and Twitter are violating his rights, among others. Critics say those private companies are within their rights, and Trump has no case. But there's a new piece in the Wall Street Journal. Check it out today, arguing that tech censorship violates the Constitution. The author is Vivek Ramaswamy. He's a biotech entrepreneur and author of the upcoming book, Woke Inc., which is out about mid-August. Vivek, how you doing? Good morning to you. Make your case. Good to see you. Go ahead and make your case. Sure. So... Look, I think that ordinarily private companies get to decide what shows up on their websites, and that's exactly the basic principle by which private companies work. But it's different when private companies coordinate directly with the government, respond to government threats, and are cloaked with the benefit of government-provided immunity to do indirectly through the back door what the government cannot directly do under the Constitution. And the Supreme Court has been crystal clear that if there's one North Star in the relationship between the government and our private companies, it is that government cannot dispatch its dirty work to private companies when the government can't do that directly. Okay, and I mean, nowhere is that I'm, more important yeah, than in the case of censorship. I'm going to drill down on a few examples. Here is one yep. of them. September of 2020, Mark Zuckerberg running Facebook says that they were working along with the CDC to prevent COVID-related content that was not apparently verified or not true. Well, uh, that had a lot to do with the Wuhan lab leak. But once the, yeah, well, once the so, thinking so, so. on that change, they had to reverse course. Absolutely. I mean, that's just one example among many, Bill. What we've seen is a consistent pattern of willful coordination between these big tech companies and big government to decide what content is and isn't permissible. And the Supreme Court has held that if the government provides immunity to companies to be able to do something that the government can't do, like censor speech, or if the government threatens companies to do what the government can't do, like censor speech, or if private companies voluntarily coordinate with the government to do what the government can't do, like censor speech, that should still be bound by the First Amendment. And here we have examples of all three. Section 230 is the blanket of immunity. There are clear government threats from congressmen and senators at every level, threatening companies to say that if they don't deplatform Trump, actually, and certainly if they don't censor misinformation and hate speech, they're going to be regulated. And further, these companies willfully coordinated with the government to take down information that the government wanted to see. That is not the action of a private company. That is the action of the state in the garb of private enterprise. And I think President Trump can take that case, if he argues it the right way, all the way to the Supreme okay. Court. And win. I, there's a couple things I could pick out. Here's just one of them from what you write. No company in U.S. history is so comprehensively silenced elected officials or prevented them from communicating with citizens. Worse, they did so at the behest of and in careful coordination with government leaders in the ascendant opposition party as it gained power. That has to do with canceling Trump, and that has to do with Hunter Biden in the laptop that was squelched. It has to do with every piece of information over the last year that big tech has said that it did not want to platform online. And to me, the idea that these are private companies is actually a farce when they're working in as careful coordination with big government and especially government in the opposition party in the way that they have. So, so the key bill, though, is can President Trump actually make these arguments with discipline? Because I think his initial lawsuit left a lot to be desired. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. I think that, however, if he takes the right case to court with the right precedents, I think there's actually a strong legal precedent on his side. And if he's able to marshal those arguments to make both the state action claim, as well as a more nuanced claim that Section 230, if it preempts laws like we've seen in Florida, Section 230 might itself be unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. If he can make those kinds of arguments in the right way, I think he has actually a winning case all the way up to and including well, the Supreme Court. I hope you come back soon, okay, Vivek Ramaswamy. Thank you so much for your time today. The author of the new book, Woke Inc.